Hello everybody and welcome to another protein data set tutorial. Um, my name is Kate and today we are going to be breaking down the Quark Visualizer in the toolkit. So the two Quark Visualizer is a really kind of interesting way to visualize smaller structures inside of a protein. Um, it's something that, as I've been told by the visualization community who work with proteins, do you really need to visualize that? And the answer is yes, one for two things. Um, one, I know it's completely unnecessary to visualize quarks and proteins, but I really wanted to build quarks in Houdini scientifically and accurately, and I was able to achieve it, so it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> That's all tongue-in-cheek, by the way. Um, but anyways, what you are looking at right now is a representation of the um, protein down quarks that exist within the structure, and you can scale them up by using these scales, and you can see all these circles that surround every single quark that exists in that structure. So if you were to combine this, let's say, with our space filling HDA, we'll put this down and merge these two together, you would be able to see every single quark in every single amino acid or space filling diagram within the structure. So that's what we're gonna showcase. And there we go. We have our amino acid, our A chain of our amino acid, the total atomic counts, uh, the carbon count and everything, and all the quarks that exist within each single one of those amino acids and elements. And I find that very impressive and fun. So let's kind of break down the quark visualizer. So in order to get the quark visualizer to work, you need to drop down an atomic property stop. Um, this applies all the information on all the elements that you will need to start visualizing your quarks. Um, I like to always use this in general when I'm working with my tool set because um, it just helps me visualize everything about the structures better. So if we turn it on, we can see that we all, throughout this entire structure, we have mostly non-metals, uh, but we do have halogens in the mix, which you can see right there. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Now I'm gonna turn those off for now, and we're gonna go down to the Quark Visualizer. So the Quark Visualizer um, gives you options. It outputs a few different groups. So if you go to your geometry spreadsheet, which you should be spending most of your time here, um, you can go find these groups. So there's P down quark, P quark, P up quark, and N up quark, N quark, and N down quark. Um, and new, basically the N quark and the P quark groups are basically the overall groups of all the quarks within protons or neutrons. So if I was to change this group right here to P quark, Houdini is going to think for a few seconds, and then now it's visualizing all of the quarks within a proton. So it's going to take some time to calculate, and the reason it, I chose circles to visualize them was because they're, it's a very non-heavy object in Houdini, and it can allow us to either visualize the lines or turn those lines into geometry. So I think they're very useful, at least for estimating where their actual physical position of those quarks are by a circle radius. Um, you can also see how many neutrons <laughs> are in something or protons are in something. So you can do that um, and you can visualize, I guess, even those attributes through this visualizer, but I wouldn't recommend it. That's the thing about this. There's so much data when you are presented it with it in the spreadsheet, you get kind of overwhelmed sometimes, um, which is okay. But you do have to keep in mind that um, you sometimes might have to clear things out from time to time, color-wise, quark-wise, anything-wise. So if we jump up to this surface here, we can also visualize different th other things, such as electrons. So here the colors basically allow you to, with these atoms, because each element has its own atoms that creates um, that element. So when we, when you look at all these points in 3D space, so like one circle in particular, um, that one circle kind of represents one atom. And so every atom for each individual element has a certain number of electrons, protons, and neutrons. 
So you really want to kind of color code or diagnose the scattering of electrons and the structure sometimes. And so this is kind of what this is for. It's a really rough example. Um, so if we were to go to electron, we could go here, click on it. The highest value is 56. The lowest value is six. And if we look at the structure, we can actually see by rough estimate based on the element that exists within that structure and where it exists, uh, which element has the greatest amount of electrons. So you would also have to use this in combination uh, with your amino acid SOPs, maybe ghosting the amino acid SOPs over these parts, over this visualizer so you can actually see um, where the highest electron values are. Um, so I'll leave that up to you if you want to look at it. You can also do the same thing with protons as well, or you can do stuff with neutrons. So that's a kind of a cool way to kind of start to try and visualize the smaller elements of a protein. Um, and this is kind of my first stab at it. And if anyone has any recommendations on how to visualize them better, I would totally recommend and be willing to listen to those recommendations. So that's it for this quark visualization HDA, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.